So this is just a short little addendum to my original uh, review and comparison video of the Siglent SDS 2000 series to the Rigel DS 2000. Um, I wanted to look, you know, I've, I've been doing more and more testing on it, and I'm pretty impressed with Siglent's engine, his, its sampling and processing engine, and the intensity grading. Um, and so I wanted to try to make a little video to just demonstrate the intensity grading as, as well as I could on, on video because I didn't really capture that perhaps so well in the, in the initial review. And I wanted to just go over a couple of points real quick. Um, as I mentioned in the original review, the Siglin, to me at the time when I was you know, testing it and running against the Rigel, seemed to be doing something a little bit strange with intensity grading that I wasn't quite clear about. And then you know, doing more tests, I discovered the Siglin appears to do intensity grading after it um, downsamples from uh, the original, you know, waveform it captures, where the Rigel, at least with larger memory lengths, it, it does the intensity grading before, and then it's uh, downsampling. So you get the, you know, on the Rigel, you get um, the effect of a lot of points compressed down into one, you know, pixel column on the display can have varying intensity, where on the Siglent, it's only about overlapping waveforms. You could argue the Rigel's, you know, the Rigel's implementation of intensity grading is a closer approximation of an analog scope. The other thing is the Siglent's um, number of level it levels it uses, because um, I did a lot of analyzing of images captured from the screen, and it's, it's, it's actually using 256 levels of grading, where the Rigel, even though they claim that in advertising, they never use more than 64 levels um, for a waveform. So the Siglent is doing true 256 level grading. Um, but since that grading is keyed not to uh, sample length, but it's keyed strictly to waveforms per second, um, you see, uh, that's why I was saying before, when you go to these slower time bases, it seemed like the grading was dropping out or, you know, getting very irregular. And that's because as you drop down in waveforms per second, um, the number of levels is decreasing. And so when you get to those slower time bases where there's only, you know, 60 or 30 or 20 or 10 or 5 or 1 waveform per second, grading looks way wonkier on the Siglent than it does on the Rigel. So, um, again, there's advantages to both methods, but you know when the Siglent is when it does have over you know a thousand waveforms per second and it's doing that 256 level um, grading, it looks really fantastic. It looks better than the Rigel. So what I wanted to try to do was um, to, to capture a little, little bit of that on the screen, and also I'll demonstrate exactly how it drops grading based on waveforms per second. It's very hard to capture just how nice um, the grading looks with the video camera. So I'm uh, I've really, you know, screwed around with adjusting the shutter and the iris to try to um, get as good an exposure as possible to, to see the full range of um, grading. Give a few examples here to try to, um, you know, just try to demonstrate how nice it looks. It's a little hard to see. Again, it looks much better in reality than it does on the video, but um, We'll just go through a couple uh, different kinds of waveforms to try to demonstrate uh, the grading, and then I'm also going to then adjust the iris a little um, uh, more closed in order to photograph the color temperature grading, which is much brighter and uh, tends to wash out the exposures. Here we are looking at some noise at the 20 nanosecond time base, and just look how fantastic that shading is there. You're really getting that's got to be in the 200, 220 range of, of shades there. It really looks fantastic. Here's the same waveform going into channels two, three, and four, and you can see that it still looks quite good. Um, you will notice that the intensity grading is fluctuating a bit. That's as the waveform update rate fluctuates between um, 25 and about 30K. And uh, many of the time bases on the Siglent, the waveform update rate fluctuates a bit. And uh, I imagine that's something they'll iron out in later versions, just as the Rigel did. 
One more example, this time down at the low end. So we're at 50 microseconds per division, and you can see the grading again still looks fantastic. We get to the 100 microseconds um, a division, and right now um, it's still fantastic grading, and we're at 600 and around 650 waveforms per second right now. And as we go one more time base down to the 200 microsecond, we're going to drop below the 512 marker. And you'll see all of a sudden we lost a whole bunch of the grades. We're down to about 333 waveforms per second, and we're down to maybe 24 shades or something from, you know, or somewhere up around 200 to 24. So that's where it drops off from this point, from the 200 microseconds and down. One interesting thing I discovered playing around with the intensity grading was that I figured out you could use the trigger hold off time as a way to um, force uh, different waveform update rates of the, on the scope and then you can see exactly how the grading changes um, and exactly when it changes. So right now um, we're, I've got the trigger out from the Siglent going to the Rigel and I can read it from where I'm sitting. It's at about 436 um, waveforms per second and you can see what the grading looks like on the video camera, but um, when I change the hold off time here, I can force the update rate slightly higher or lower, and you'll see the we're right near the boundary of where the intensity grading changes kind of dramatically. So let's see, um, that's going up. We're going to go down till there. We're at 430 waveforms per second. You see how drastically all of a sudden the grading changed because it, it dropped the number of levels dramatically and if I flip it right back up there I'm at 432 434 and all of a sudden the grading is much much um, broader again so I'm feeding a video signal in because I wanted to see what the shading looked like the 256 levels when you were triggering on all lines of a video say your standard video signal but unfortunately on the Siglent, it appears that when you are using the video trigger type, you're locked to the frame rate of the si of the video signal. In this case, I'm I'm on standard PAL, so it's 25 hertz. Um, and even if I'm saying to sync to any, or in this case, all lines, it's um, staying locked to that 25 hertz. And at 25 waveforms per second, um, you're never going to get more than you know three or four levels of shading. So there's no way to see that wonderful. 256 levels on a video signal from the video trigger itself. If I go instead to, for example, the edge trigger, now we can see it, but we can't do this from the video trigger, so it's a little odd, but anyway. So we'll just cycle through a little bit of the scale of the grading. Okay, we got the iris shut down a bit. We're trying to look at that noise at 20 nanoseconds again with color temperature on. And again, I hope I've got the exposure um, set correctly, but just wonderful different shades of color here. When it's doing the color temperature grading, it's not using 256 levels. It's, it's then doing 128. Maybe it has to do with using one of the bits for um, uh, the lookup table. But in any case, um, 128 shades is still fantastic looking. And uh, if I flip around a little bit, hope, hopefully this is coming across, but it looks just fantastic in person. Really wonderful, wonderful shading. So hopefully this little video will have given people a, a better idea of the quality, the intensity grading on the Siglent than my first video did. And so um, I hope that this has been, you know, informative or at least entertaining.